I know last year we talked a little bit about my career in higher education and, and um, my creative pursuits and maybe the tension between the two, how maybe one wasn't serving the other. And uh, so I have finally left higher education after 23 years. Mm -hmm. And that you were planning to do that. I was, I was really burnt out and felt like it was really weighing down my creativity. So I think what I found since I have left is that you think about, you think about your, your present a little differently because you are now, oh, at least I am in the process of trying to figure out, well, what is the unique intersection of all of the things that I do? I think we all try to figure that out, but I think in terms of marketing or what makes you different, or even pondering the question you just you just asked, right? What well, what is unique about my creativity? And I think that what I've come to find is that even though I've left higher education, the educator is still in me. And so my focus on creativity is always, well, how can I share this? It's never in a vacuum. It's always well, what's the value to other people as a result of me finding something out? Or um, so I think my unique my unique intersection is where sort of your your art and your your knowledge maybe intersect. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah, I I work with um, level seven apprentices at the moment, which is like MBA. They're they're doing MBAs. And so what you've just said reminds me like they've got to show competencies in knowledge, skills and behavior. So it's that intersection of like, the, what is the knowledge, skills and behavior that you have? How can you synthesize it to be, to sell yourself as being unique? Yeah, and, and I think a lot of people can spend a lot of time trying to figure out the answer to that question. And I think at the end of the day, you, um, you, find that it's, it's, it's a little bit about your temperament, your personality, how you're wired. It's a little bit about how you prefer to work, um, a solid, you know, singularly with teams. Um, and it's a little bit about your own, um, you know, need for structure or, or to be unstructured. And so I think for me, I have found that I work better alone, but that I need the, I need the outlet with teams um, regularly, uh, maybe not, maybe not every week, but I need that creative community that I think is what kept me in higher education so long is because I had colleagues. So now I'm transitioning and I'm finding those, those connections in other places, but I, I think the creative mindset, um, can often be a, a singular one, a solitary kind of artistic experience. What's going on? you know, between our ears and how, how much do we need people in that, in that conversation? Sometimes people distract me. Sometimes I very much need them. Yes. It depends on the stage of creativity. You know, there are stages in that creative cycle where you need to be alone, like during the, that, um, that space that you need to generate those ideas. And then when it comes to evaluating those ideas and seeing what impact they make, then obviously you need to have that external stimulus, the, evaluation can't just be self-evaluation right right and, and it's often short-sighted if it is yeah yeah because in terms of selling your work then there needs to be that feedback from others yes very much so i i just did a pop-up art show uh for flood relief because we were very flooded around here and i just did this pop-up art show and i i normally don't do a lot of uh a lot of art shows or craft shows or any of those anymore. I don't, I'm at a stage where I don't need to do those as much. And, but I love the feedback that you get. So I did it, even though I thought, I don't think this is going to make me any money and it's a drive, but I got great feedback. And so it's something you don't get when you sell your art primarily online or when you're selling your writing, you know, primarily through electronic communication and not, not in an office. Yes, and that feedback can be so valuable because, again, it's like creativity doesn't occur in isolation. And so without that um, continuous feedback loops, we're not evolving as much as we, we may be. Yes. And I think the, the other part of that is you have to also un have, you have to have enough uh, 
self-confidence to know when to uh, ignore the feedback. Sometimes you need to walk away from it and say, I don't think that's right at all. But it's good to hear it. Uh, and it's good to know yourself well enough that you can you can debunk it if if you want. And there have been times where I have totally gone against the grain of every advice that I ever received, and I was right because I trusted my intuition. But um, that would be an interesting discussion, you know, creativity and intuition uh, in and of itself. Yes, that's right. Because as you say, it does require self confidence and high self-esteem to trust our gut instincts, doesn't it? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. This, uh, we, we talked about the paint or the, the, the work behind me. It, it's a part of a series of my show in October is called woven together. So there's an element of weaving in every piece I'm doing. And this is 36 by 72, which is pretty large for a piece of art. And, I got advice, oh, that's going to take forever. It's not going to be worth it. It's going to be too monochromatic. Well, I'm thrilled with the, the, with the outcome. So um, I didn't really intend it to be a prop today, but um, it's, it's sitting here because it's in it's transit. Awesome. It's yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Thanks. And, you know, with art, what, what we're selling or the value that we're, we're um, creating is aesthetics, isn't it? So beauty being one of them, like yeah. what else apart from beauty is it that we're, we're creating with art? Well, I think ultimately art like music or, or dance or whatever is, um, the power is in how it moves us, right? And so um, I've gone to gallery shows before and thought, oh, that makes me feel really negative. Um, and uh, so I think at the end of the day, what everyone's going to uh, look at art a little bit differently and um, what one person might have a really strong negative reaction to another person will really feel like that's a comforting piece of art. Or So I think at the end of the day, it just becomes about the um, emotional connection to one's art. And sometimes I don't know why a piece moves me. I just know it does. I can't maybe necessarily deconstruct the emotional message in it, but I know that it's making me feel something. Mm -hmm. And so um, I think that's the beauty of abstract art and maybe why I have settled into abstract art because I find that there's something for everybody in an abstract piece of art. You can almost construct your own message in it. And I think that's important in a day and age where you have lots of options and you could you could buy art anywhere so why would you buy it from me right hopefully it's because i've connect connected with you emotionally and um when we do that as artists it's we're thrilled because it's not unlike a performer on stage who who receives the applause and then sits up a little higher and takes note of that and and it becomes this symbiotic relationship back and forth right the artist gives the audience something and the audience gives the artist something back and it becomes this symbiotic relationship whether it's a, at the theater a concert or as someone in a solitary moment looking at a painting it's still a symbiotic kind of relationship but if there isn't one there then that's not the piece of art for you hmm, right and some people buy art for status you know um when people buy art because it's um created by a famous person then yes. you know, they might not necessarily feel anything towards it but it gives them it makes them feel confident I suppose because they have bought an expensive piece of art yeah I, that's a that's a great um, I just had a conversation with a colleague about pricing art and um, a, a few years ago I doubled all of my prices and I ended up selling more it was the it was the idea well if it's this much it must be good i think it's such a skewed it's such a skewed thing but people buy into it there's a psychology of pricing there and um i just had a um a, a guy in business tell me i should never charge less than five grand for a speech he didn't care how long it was or to who it was mm -hmm. never charge less than five grand because you're devaluing all of your years of experience that's a little interesting to hear. So um, I just had a colleague tell me, uh, you need to raise all of your prices. Mm -hmm. uh, 
But what's not in that conversation, what other people don't know, is when you have a studio full of art, sometimes you just want to move it along. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's not about devaluing it with the price. It's just you want to move it because you want to make room for new stuff. So it's a, it's a, the pricing of art is, a. I think we could do a whole webinar just on, on that. Uh, and, and talk to other artists, uh, whether they're speakers or writers or whatever, and talk about what they charge for art, because that is a really interesting psychological conversation. Yes, yes, it is. And then let's talk about the impact of your work then. So in terms of impact, you know, like, again, let's say we have political artists who are creating an impact in let's say Banksy for example, Banksy is a street artist and he's created so much kind of yes. through, his, um, through his drawings and his graffiti. So how are you creating impact? Great question. Uh, it's funny how one develops a, an, a following, develops an audience and I think I think part of that value stems from who are you reaching and if you're not reaching anyone then uh, if, you're, if your audience is small, that might not be bad, but are you reaching the kinds of people that you need to reach? So I think it's, it's ever the, the artist's goal to make people aware of their art, to get those shows or to get, you know, uh, to get to places where people notice you. And I could care less really about uh, ego stroking. For me, it's about wanting to I want to move people, right? I want to, I want to enrich people's lives. And so that's the, that's the thing. So it's, a, I think it's a shift for artists out of, Oh, I really need to sell some art to, I really want to impact people's lives. I really want to make people's lives better. And I think for me, when I don't focus on the money, when I don't focus on the, again, I'm not really, I don't really care about fame. Right. So when I, when I strip those things away, it's just about, well, who can I help with my art? And in that way, then my market expands. I start to think about hospitals and hospice and, and cancer wings and children's, you know, I start to think about every place that could really benefit from seeing something bright and colorful and happy or at least interesting. And then your market changes. So I'm not so concerned anymore with with selling to the individual, my full focus has changed. I'm, I'm much more wanting to impact places that have to do with health and wellness and, and well-being. So I've sold to yoga studios, um, you know, so I think that makes a, a, a really difference in the mindset of the artist. Yes, I can understand that. So you're, um, you're focusing on serving as opposed yeah. to, you know, um, making making some profit that whole yes. you know, just shift yeah and the, I think when you do that the money will come uh, it's mm -hmm. just a little different mindset it, it's sort of like I'd like to get in the hotel industry I'd like to have my ho my art in hotel rooms why because I think there's a serenity to some of my pieces that after a long travel wouldn't it be nice to look at something rather than a generic still life that doesn't do anything for us. Wouldn't it be nice to look at some color and texture and just decompress from, from traveling? So same idea, different industry that's much more for profit, but um, it, it shifts how I work, I think. Yes. And when we express creativity, the end result can be a product like your pieces of art, or it can be a service, or it can be a system. Um, if in your case, is it, is it all three or is it just the, the products that you have, your art pieces? I think it's a lot of different ways because I do so many different things. Um, because I'm a writer, I just, I just published a book called Midlife Wisdom. And uh, so my target market there is people like me. I, I turned 50 um, last year. And so I've, I don't know, something different about when you have a five in front of your age and you think maybe I have less time left than I've already had. What, what's, what do I want to achieve? You know, how do I want to impact the world before I go? And so because I do so many disparate things, um, I still find there's, there's a, there's a connection with all of them. I still find the focus is the same. I still want to, at the end of the day, help people. But um, I think the, the audience becomes a little bit different and the the, the message and how you sell that becomes a little bit different. But 
um, to the root of your question though, um, it, it sort of depends on really what you want at the end of the day. Do you want, are you, are you more focused on payment fortune? Are you more focused on, on, um, on making a, a long-term impact in someone's life? Yeah. I suppose when you're teaching, that's providing a service, isn't it? You know, the, yes. so you're being creative through your, you know, through being an educator and at the same time, you have the products as well, your books and your artwork and um, systems. You know, have you created any systems that? Um, yeah, that's a great question. I, um, it's funny because I've left higher education, but I find myself wanting to create courses so that that educator in me hasn't left. So, yeah, I think that I think for me, what I find is that I have this instinct to want to mentor uh, new artists or young artists or people just maybe trying to for the first time make make a living with their art. Uh, I've learned a lot along the way and that I think I could give back. So uh, yeah, so I think I think depending on what I'm doing, there's I'm, I'm doing all three things. Yes, it is a service. Yes, it is. Um, it is, you know, a business. But um, the, the real end goal, I think, for me is, is do what you can't not do right and I can't not create art I can't <laughs> not teach people things um, so I can't ever find myself really divorced from those even if I'm leaving the you know the constraints in, in which I'm, I'm doing it so I think it's really important to figure out again as we started the conversation to figure out how you work best what do you need do you uh, I think someone like me who's more solitary and and actually can get really exhausted by being around a lot of people. I need a lot of solitary. And then when I want a lot of solitary time and then when I want feedback, I can I can I can do that. Um, same with teaching. I find that at the end of a long day of teaching, I just want to decompress and I don't even want to think about, you know, teaching anything or so I, I think the personality and the temperament of a person is has as much to do with answering that question as as what medium they're in, what what kind of art they're producing. Yes, and as as you mentioned earlier, like you you need to have an audience. Like for example, if you want to teach, you can only teach if you have some students who are, are willing yes. to learn. Yes, sometimes you might be faced with a set of students who don't really want to learn. <laughs> Oh yes, it's very difficult to be creative in that respect. Yeah, and uh, I guess going back to that symbiotic dance between your audience, you know, sometimes it becomes you you doing a solo dance uh, mm -hmm. because they're not really chiming in, they're not really giving you anything back. Uh, so yes, at the end of the day, you know, I think there's a reason that um, we, you know, there's a reason you can't reach that spot in the middle of your back, and there's a reason that even if we look in the the a mirror that we're not really seeing ourselves as other people do because I think at the end of the day we need each other we're not we're not meant to be islands right we're not meant to be in total solitary confinement we need feedback and we need each other we need that encouragement um, again hopefully what I'm producing whether it's writing or a podcast or my art um, it's helping people it's 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 resonating with somebody it's it's getting somebody over a hump that day uh, when maybe nothing else did. So, um, and sometimes we don't see our own, we're, we're not objective about our own productions, right? We're not about what we produce. Sometimes I have thrown a painting aside and thought it was total rubbish, only to have somebody come along and, and, and love it, or I'll put it on sale and it will sell like hotcakes and I can't figure out, well, why would anyone buy that? Because mm -hmm. it, it did touch them in a way and I, we can't be objective about ourselves. Yes, okay, excellent. So is there anything else that you'd like to say about being unique, valuable and making an impact? I, I think one of the things that I, where I have learned that I am uh, sort of unique is not that I do so many different things because I've already met a lot of people that are you know, doing as many things as I'm doing. I think the thing that makes me unique is that 
I have never really stopped experimenting. And so I'm always bringing something new to the table. And I'm, I think daily, if I'm not learning as much as I'm teaching or giving as much as I'm getting, I feel a little incomplete. And so that makes me one that's constantly reading, constantly learning. I'm never stagnant. Uh, this series will go away and a new series will emerge and it will be completely different utilizing skills that I never even knew I had. And um, I, a friend has called me, you know, sort of insatiable in terms of wanting to learn. And if, uh, if you bring that to what you do, then you tend to, you tend to learn more than you ever teach anybody else. Yes. And learning is a creative act, isn't it? Absolutely. And how we process information, how we can even offer just an incomplete sentence to somebody and they can understand exactly where we're going and embrace it and finish it. Um, that's, that's a, again, that, that need for people to, to compliment us. And uh, I, learning is very creative. And I think we've all had professors and classes and, and, and things we've taken that did not at all in, uh, embrace creativity that maybe put us to sleep. Or <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I always said I was never going to be that professor. I was, and, and the moment I felt myself being there, I was going to leave. Well, mm -hmm. I still feel like I'm a good professor, but it's time for new challenges. So, Sure. And yeah, and, and, and what I notice is that a lot of creative people do better on the edge of organizations as opposed to being immersed within them. That's really well said, and I think that's because we can we can see it for what it is, we can make an impact and embrace it, but then we don't want to stay too long. Mm -hmm. We want to we want to move on to something else. We want to be portable and 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 movable, if you will, onto something else. And um, and I think that's really important. I the I have had several jobs throughout my life but I've stayed in higher education the longest. And I think that's because I was really never very bored with it. It kept me, it kept me motivated, but uh, now higher education is changing so much. I'm feeling entrenched in it. And um, I, I was out of there. I felt, I felt I, I was too close to it, if you will. So I, I think you're right. I think we like to be sort of, you know, we don't want to be stuck. We want to be portable. We want to, we want to be able to move on to the next creative adventure. Yeah. And best of luck to you, Susan. Thank you so much. I'm so glad you're doing this series again. Yes. Yeah. So I look forward to speaking to you again and hopefully we'll see each other on the panels. I'll give more information about it later on. Wonderful. Yeah, that was very meaningful for me. So I'll be glad to participate again. Okay, excellent.